Well, as the title states, this video is going to be mainly about 6.7 or 7.3. Pros and cons of both. Um, I've owned both. I love both. We'll get that out of the way. So, this will just be my experience of, you know, what I think of both of the setups. And uh, also go over a few other things. This video is going to be kind of lengthy. Um, I'll keep a little slideshow of all the trucks that I've owned before at the end and it is several so what we're gonna do today is um, my 7.3 here uh, cracked a timing cover so I'm gonna go put it in the barn over my mom's house for the winter and worry about it in the spring using the little trailer today because the big trailer has a lot of mud under it. it's kind of a mess to get it out of there and I want to do a video of this trailer anyways so that's to come. Also what's to come is this is joining the barn. You just look right there. So I have a video on that. I'm not sure why the flash is on. Look at that. But anyways, we got 7.3s. We got backhoe. 6.7s. Another 7.3. Another 6.7. Some current parts trucks. So... Let's get this video rolling. I'm not entirely sure if this truck's even going to start. Lost a lot of oil, so no promises. This is one of the downfalls to the old trucks. Smoky. Jesus, it started. Well. I'm gonna get on the trailer before it runs out of oil and dies. Talk more about it in a minute. Okay, well we made it onto the trailer. So this truck, I'm not gonna name or bash any companies or their parts, but it has dual pumps on it. If you wanna know who that is, do your homework. And when I built this motor, engine, you call it whatever the hell you want, I really just don't care. Um, anyways, I felt like the pumps were really heavy and kind of a, you know, a lot of weight on the back of that timing cover. Did fine for 15,000 miles and uh, developed a crack and it puked its guts out in the driveway, quit running, added oil, got it running again, parked it ever since. That's why this truck recently hasn't been in any videos. So, gonna get it in the barn and uh, when I get some time, pull it back out, redo some other things on it and get a new setup. So get strapped down and get to talking more about 6.7s or 7.3s. Airbags. I get this level with uh, all that weight on the nose of it there. I guess you, some guys call that tongue. But anyways, so that's still cool. Coming up. Alright, so now it's ready to go. I do have one more piece of exciting news. This is our new pal Gunner. So we got him out of a rescue. They said he's 13 from Texas and he was surrendered to a kill shelter. And uh, long story short, somebody put out a plea on Facebook for him and we got him. Very happy to adopt a senior, me and my wife. Love giving them that second chance, and after losing my last senior, it's nice to get another one to be able to take care of, and my little dog collars right here, actually. But anyways, so, 6.7 versus 7.3. Um, first and foremost, as far as the market goes, uh, it's a lot cheaper to buy a 7.3 than it is to buy a 6.7. Um, as far as power goes, hands down six seven for towing anything like that um it's really it's hard to compare the two as far as you know ride quality because to tell you the truth it it comes down more to you know i think it really comes down to the road um i guess i would say my six seven is you know really comfortable and has all the bells and whistles, but my 7.3, I 
all of them, um, well, most of them, not all, they rode pretty good. So, a truck's a truck. Uh, a lot of times it depends on wheelbase and what your preferences are. Anything, buddy. But, uh, you can buy a good 7.3, depending on where your area is. You can usually buy a really good solid truck for you know eight to ten thousand and when i say good solid truck i mean it's clean it's not beat to shit and it's got you know less than two hundred thousand miles on it 250 um i've had seven threes from sixty thousand miles all the way to five hundred and thirty thousand miles so they last and it's yet to be determined you know where a six seven is going to stand in 20 years because as we know, you know, 7.3s, they will stand the test of time. As far as the aluminum bodies go, you know, they're never going to have a rust issue. Guys can knock them all they want, left and right, but they ain't never going to rust. And that is a problem throughout most of the U.S. Is eventually, you know, after 15, 20 years, just about every truck has rust. Um, if you're somewhere like... Just name a couple places, Wisconsin, Minnesota, you know, just places like that, Michigan. Uh, trucks rust out within, hell, some of them start rusting really bad within the first year. But it's one of the ways I make my money is I part out trucks and I sell parts to guys that come to me from out east, take them back and sell them to the locals, guys that want to fix their trucks. But... Um, if you're wondering, should I buy a 6.7, should I give up my 7.3, I can tell you, it really just depends on what you want to do with your truck. Um, I'll get into more of why, road trucks are rough, why I ended up with one, and the short answer is, my 6-speed 7.3 got totaled, I'm tired of, you know, working on stuff, replacing stuff, I didn't want to be you know, at times be a thousand miles from home and have to worry about if my high pressure oil pump's gonna make it. Um, not very common that they don't, but more cam sensor just randomly going out. And new trucks have their issues, we all know that. But to start from scratch, that you know, you're not buying somebody else's broken down toy or somebody else's worn out, clapped out 7.3 that they've ran hard since, you know, the first year they owned it or, you know, it's the seventh or eighth owner by the time you get it. You can't trust what other people do. There's a pretty Chevy right there. But, uh, you'll see in a little bit here, you'll see my wrecked one. But, I just always kind of liked the 6.7s and I finally got real serious about buying one and happened to find this particular one and ended up buying it and haven't looked back since um i will always be a 7.3 guy and i will probably always own one as long as the government lets you and whatnot but i could go on and on and on about this um you can talk about you know your 7.3 with its chip and its turbo and all that is just oh man it makes so much horsepower and it it just pulls the it'll pull the mountains over that may be true, but let me tell you, you're going to have an EGT problem. Um, they get hot. I've had several, including this one on the trailer, that it puts out more power than my 6.7 does, but it dumps smoke doing it, and it gets hot, and it uses more fuel. So, there it is right there. But that's just... Uh, and that's just it, you know, if you're using it day in and day out for towing, 6.7 is the way to go. Um, if you're no, if you're just using your truck as a get-around truck and occasionally pull your boat or your camper or whatever, um, there's really nothing wrong with the 7.3. And it will serve you well and it will do well, but they wear out. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I love 7.3s, but this video is about 7.3 or 6.7, and like I said, it literally just depends on 
what you want to do with your truck and what your budget is I'll I'll put it out there right now said done and out the door I spent seventy thousand dollars on my truck um, the 7.3 behind me I've had it for 12 years and I spent eight for it 12 years ago you're just making all sorts of noise but I'd do it all again and when the time comes I find a 6.7 or not a 6.7 a 7.3 like my one that got wrecked I will buy another 7.3 as you know a good hard working truck that's a get around truck and can do most of everything I want to do but when it comes to pulling and pulling the big trailer little trailer I don't really care um, take my 6.7 every single time but I'm just about to get on some rougher roads so I'll get back to you in a minute when we get back or when we get to where we're going all right, now we're here. So this is my 7.3, or one of them. This was the current one I'd had that I was really putting a lot of time and effort into. So I had the bed the way I wanted it, obviously. Just good looks, bumper up front. Let's see if this door will open. Of course, the leaves get in here. I just had all the seats reupholstered. So, brand new Lariat. And like I said, it's a six speed. Everything I've been looking for. We hit so hard, it sunk in the radio. And you'll notice the airbags didn't go off. And in this particular wreck, it turned out okay they didn't. But had it been something else, maybe we wanted those to go off. And, uh, hey bud, it's first time here. Another parts truck. But, you know, some of these 7.3s back in the day had a bit of a recall on things like the airbag. And, well, this one apparently didn't get it or still doesn't work. No, no, Gunner. You can see it shifted the frame about nine inches to the driver's side is how far the frame is bent. I have a light bar hiding up in here somewhere right there that thing still works pretty cool flip the switch lights up but even being smashed up in there but yeah both frame rails are bent to one side and uh pulling a trailer and the guy went through the stop sign and we never got to even touch the brakes so the relevance to that is the safety features that this truck has, which are very different from, sorry about him barking, adopted dogs get a little more anxiety, but compared to this old truck, which is a 96, this one's a 2000, and that one's a 18, the airbags, the different ways they're made to crumble, just absorb the impact, way different. So, as far as safety goes, it's pretty hard to compare. And what helped on this one is it pushed my bumper up into the core support, radio support, whichever, and stopped. It had nowhere else to go. Uh, the truck still runs and drives. It doesn't drive straight and doesn't hold fluid, but it still does. I'm actually going to move it down into one of the other barns down here as well for the winter. So, I know this video is getting a little long and a little bit of rambling, but I'm trying to give a little bit of information on my experiences with them. But. Anyways, get some stuff moved around and I'll get back at you. This is one thing you won't get out of a 6.7. If you wreck it like this, it's not going to start, let alone drive. It hasn't been started in about three or four months, so a little smoky. And like I told you, that light still works. 
but it doesn't hold any water, so gotta get it inside. Well, basically, sum it all up. Um, not really the greatest comparison video by any means, but you kind of get the idea. You get what you pay for to, a, to an extent. If you pay all the extra money that I paid, and sorry, the road's bumpy here. Um, you know, you get a brand new truck, you get a brand new technology, you get the warranty, you get all that. Um, but, you know, if you really just need a solid truck, uh, you know, here and there, you might have to do something like injectors or a little bit more serious work. Um, hell, you buy a truck for $8,000, you put, say, another five into it, you're still into it for less than 15. And uh, my insurance on my truck, on the 6.7, is, um, I think it's about $20, $30 higher a month than my 7.3s are, and that's full coverage. So you pay more for insurance, you pay more for your tags with a newer truck, but really you can't go wrong um, with whatever you pick. Depends on your budget, depends on what you want. But if you're sitting on the fence wondering, you know, should I upgrade to the 6.7? Um, the answer is yes. If you can financially do it and don't, you know, financially strain yourself or burden yourself with the payment or somehow you're able to buy it in all cash, good for you. Um, some people can, some people can't. Then, yeah, go for it. Um, you you got to deal with the mission stuff. You have to deal with the def, which really, it's really not that big of a deal. I'm being honest with you guys. These trucks run phenomenal, even with all the emission shit on them. Obviously, they're going to run better without it. But even with that stuff, they just run. Uh, the key to any truck, doesn't matter what you like, what your brand is, anything, is you got to maintain it. And it all starts with changing your oil. You know, waiting 15 or 20,000 miles to change your oil. It's probably the stupidest thing you can do and you really shouldn't own a truck at that point unless you're really just planning to buy it ruin it and sell it make it the next guy's problem then more power to you but really guys it's just maintenance it's all you gotta do to make these trucks last no matter what you get but anyways i have some more videos to come um we'll get a walk around of that limited get some of the trailer review videos. I get a lot of questions about the trailers. I get a lot of random questions. I have people ask me where I live. Like literally like my address, not just what state. Um, I'm in Colorado. So if you're from the area, or at least my area, you probably know exactly where I am. But, um, and people ask how old I am. Uh, I'm 27, born on Christmas day. I'll be 28 in about a month and a half. So, I guess keep asking whatever questions you want, um, and I'll answer them as we go. But, until next time guys, we'll see you later.